For the past month, I've been researching and experimenting with Fred again's most iconic sounds, including his signature melodic drones, how he turns a spoken word into catchy lead vocals, his drums, use of field recordings, how he creates lead melodies out of samples, and much more. I took all of this knowledge and turned it into my own Fred again inspired track, which I'm about to play for you. And then I'm gonna take you through all of these techniques so you can use them in your own music. These videos are support by my sound design course. You can use the code in the description for 30% off, but more about that later. Everything we've been through. Oh, I forgive you. I forgive you. It goes better when I'm with you. Okay, so I think it makes sense to start with Fred again's use of drones. And I th actually think it's a really helpful tool to really kind of solidify the key you're working in. It also gives you kind of a backdrop or almost like canvas to work over as well, which is really nice. Now, the standard way to make a drone would be taking a pad like this one, which is actually from a preset pack of mine. You can check out in the description if you're interested. And say you're working in the key of C major or C minor, the safest note you can play would be obviously a C. Another really safe note you can use is actually the fifth of the scale. So in this case, this tracks in C major, you can also play a G. So yeah, my first tip is try to stick to the root note of your scale, but you can also play the fifth in that scale as well. Don't feel like you have to stick to these two notes. Definitely kind of experiment. But the other thing that I wanted to mention is you don't have to use sustained sounds like pads. You can see I've got this Una Corda piano plugin open here by Niels Fram, really amazing piano plugin. And I've combined this with a reverb set to 100%. So if I just play some notes here. Really, really beautiful texture. The other thing that I would mention as well is that you generally want to kind of EQ your drones because it is a kind of constant sound throughout the track. It can be helpful to use like a tight EQ. We can actually make this even more extreme and roll off some of the highs. Just a bit of side chain compression to move out of the way of the kick. So yeah, let's talk about arguably Fred again's most kind of iconic sound design technique, and that's turning spoken word into vocal melodies. Now the source material I used for this was actually a poem by the UK rapper Lyle Karner. And I hope that it continue after everything you've been through, living a life that was sinful. If you've not heard of him, definitely go check him out. He's an insanely talented guy. So I'll just play you the raw samples. Everything we've been through. Yo, I forgive you. I forgive you. Better when I'm with you. The question is, how do we go about making something that doesn't really have any sort of identifiable pitch or key and turn it into a vocal melody? Well, I have to say that after experimenting with a lot of different autotune plugins, nothing really comes close to Melodyne. Now, the good news is, you can opt for Melodyne's cheapest option. That gives you everything that you need to be able to do this technique. So a few tips that I do wanna give you is it can be really, really helpful to get your drone playing in the background while you play around with the melody. So I'll show you what I have here with the drone. Everything we've been through. Yo, I forgive you. I forgive you. Better when I'm with you. So you can hear that, you know, it doesn't sound perfect. There's some artifacts. However, from listening to a lot of interviews with Fred again, he's really a big believer of, you know, not worrying too much about the fidelity of the audio in your recordings. It's really just more about the emotional impact. And does it sound good to you? Is it enjoyable to listen to? Which I think is a really, really fresh and interesting attitude. I know I wish I would have adopted that earlier on. But just to give you kind of a brief summary of some of the things you can do in Melodyne, we have our piano roll along the left and we can 
kind of move stuff around into different notes. If we click this button up here, this pitch tool, we can move stuff around. Everything we've been through. Also really useful is this pitch modulation tool. You can see each of these notes has these little lines and that's the pitch variance in the little snippet itself. So if you drag it down, it becomes more stable to the note you're actually trying to hit. Everything we've been through. And then with this cursor, you can obviously move stuff around as well. So say we wanted to delay this last phrase, you can move it around. I tweaked the timing and Melodyne first and then all I did was record this to another track. So you can see I've got this audio track here. Everything we've been through. He wants to give you. So first of all, I just have this auto pan. I've been really enjoying using this on vocals recently. Everything we've been through. Everything we've been through. I just like a bit of a subtle amount of auto pan. I also have gem dopamine, which is a really, really great plugin for kind of bringing out details in recordings that might not have been, you know, ideally recorded. Everything we've been through. Then I just have some Valhalla Vintage Verb. Everything we've been through. And then a bit of sidechain compression just to move it out of the way of the kick. Everything we've been through. I did also send this to a return track. So if we look on this return track here, you can see I'm only using one return track for the whole project. And I just have this Echo Boy preset. I absolutely love this Echo Boy's Galaxy preset and Echo Boy. It's really good for big soundscapes. Everything we've been through. You want to give you. I forgive you. Because this is quite an extreme delay, first of all, I do have some sidechain compression to move this return track audio away from the kick and kind of give it that pumping sound and make a bit of room. And also, I do have some FabFilter Pro Q just for a kind of narrow band. Again, similar to the drone, when you're using return tracks with quite heavy delay or reverb, because it is a sustained constant sound, it is important to kind of move that out of the way of some other elements that it might end up fighting. One other bonus tip I wanna give as well is don't feel like you have to use a lot of return tracks. I use pretty much this same return track for a lot of the elements that I wanted to go into some sort of delay or reverb. For example, I also sent the hi-hat that we're gonna be covering soon into there as well as the lead. So once I was happy with the processing and the timing and pitch and everything in Melodyne, I just recorded this to another audio track. I also have these kind of little audio chops as well. And these were really simple. I just took the last U from the original vocal and then just used some complex pro warping and pitched it up 12 semitones. And then for this last little note, I pitched it to plus 10 just to kind of go with the bass line and that kind of thing. Pretty simple bass line, just a sustained sound. You can see I'm using a few octaves of these notes here. And as for the actual patch itself, I'm just using Monarch by Native Instruments. Very simple, just saw wave patch going through a low pass filter. Everything we've been through. You I forgive you. I forgive you. And yeah, just a bit of side chain compression on the bass on there as well. I'll just briefly mention these videos are supported by my sound design course. For the next couple of weeks only, you can actually get a huge 30% discount by using the code 30 off. This course is my effort to give you a structured way to learn sound design that I wish I had when I was starting out. Not only does the course cover all the fundamentals you need to know, but also actually uses practical and modern examples throughout. I'm always adding new videos to keep it up to date with the latest tools and techniques. Again, if this sounds like something you'd benefit from, from, you should definitely take advantage of the 30% discount right now by using the code 30 off and head in to the link in the description. Okay, so let's talk about drums. Now, generally, and I, I'll say especially, you know, for Fred again's more kind of emotionally driven tracks, his drums are quite stripped back and minimal. And I think that does really allow a lot of the kind of melodic content to shine. And that's obviously where a lot of the emotion is carried. As you can see, we just have a kick channel, a snare, a splice loop, and a hi-hat. Now, one thing I have noticed is that when it comes to sample selection, Fred again 
kind of opts for more, I would say, like hip hop style drums than stereotypical dance or EDM kicks with like a ton of low end and like sounding really clicky and that kind of thing. But if we listen to this kick drum here, you can hear it has a decent amount of low end in it, but it does have kind of like a knocky texture to it, like more kind of low mids than just, you know, pure sub. And especially because we're using quite a sustained bass sound that's playing constantly throughout the track, I think it's really nice to have a kick that doesn't necessarily have a really lengthy and loud kind of low end to it. And obviously I've not done everything I can to kind of mix these together, but I think even just with some sidechain compression, because the sample selection works with the bass sound, it sounds fine to me. And the same for this snare here. Kind of a garagey snare with not much high end. I do just have a little bit of Valhalla plate. And then I just use this kind of splice loop, kind of a shuffly, nice, like garagey loop. So one thing you might notice here is it's very quiet. And that's another thing I kind of wanted to point out. Not only are a lot of his drums like minimal, you know, there's not that many elements going on, but a lot of the time, a lot of the drums are actually mixed quite quiet. And I think that's something really important to bear in mind that even if we play this in the context of the track, you can still hear the groove of this loop. Everything we be free. It's just loud enough that the groove comes through without dominating the mix, again, to make room for the kind of melodic and emotional content. The last tip that I wanna give you for drums that I think is really, really cool, and it's Fred Again's hi-hats. Now, what I've noticed is it seems like a lot of his hi-hats tend to be using noise textures. I've got one loaded in here. I'll just play you what this sounds like on its own. This hi-hat is just made using a noise texture. It's actually from my free noise collection that if you wanna grab, there'll be a link in the description. It's a completely free download. And what I'm using here is a couple of different Ableton LFOs. Now this first one here is set to the start position. And the goal of this is to make each individual hit, which is being triggered by our MIDI, a slightly different timbre. And in addition to that, I also have this other LFO, which is set to the detune amount here you can see this is constantly changing and this is also set to a random pattern and then again this is just going into a plate reverb and also a return track here as well but just listen to how each individual hit sounds slightly different with kind of a different timbre It's very, very subtle, but makes a really big difference. So yeah, hopefully you can have some fun with that one. One technique that I think is really important to cover before we move on to Fred again's lead sounds is his use of field recordings. He'll record stuff on his phone, environments he's in, conversations with friends, voice notes, stuff like that. And it really adds an extra bit of personality to his music, which is really, really cool. Now, one thing I did do was sample the crowd from the original video that the Lol Kana poem is from. So I've used this crowd sample the same way that a lot of people would use like a symbol or something like that, just to mark the start of the track. And I think this is a really, really cool thing to do where you take something that's not a typical sound that you use in the track, but use it as a replacement for something else. So if I play the start of the track, hopefully you can hear that come through a bit. Everything we be free. Really, really effective. And I also did something similar at the end of the track. You can also probably hear I've heavily sidechained this. Obviously it's quite a broadband sound covering a lot of frequencies. So just to kind of move it out of the way of the track and add kind of a pumping effect, it actually helps add to the groove as well. It's really, really cool. I also had these little bits of ad lib. It goes like this. It's a beautiful thing. 
and yeah, just using parts of the original audio without any tuning alongside the kind of melodic version, it actually adds so much. Everything we've been through. So yeah, don't be afraid to, you know, throw things in there that might not necessarily be a typical recording you'd use in a track. It can really add a lot of personality. Really, you know, your own kind of creativity and your imagination is the limit. Okay, so now let's talk about Fred again's lead sounds. Now, I think just from listening to a lot of his music that the process he uses a lot of the time is to go with a sample based approach where he'll take some kind of recording and turn it into a melody, which I'm going to show you how to do. Now, with the vocal ending up being such a prominent part of this track, I ended up just going for a lead that kind of sits in the background a bit. So what I did was basically just go on splice and try to find some sort of instrumental loop that had a sustained note. So all I did was load an Ableton simpler device, drag and drop this sample in, and then I set the start position to start at the sustained note. Now you can see similar to the hi-hat earlier, I also set an LFO to modulate the start position. Let me just turn off our effects here. And as you can tell there, the timbre is different each time because of this LFO. Really, really effective technique. I also just softened the attack here just to kind of get rid of any click sounds. Then I added some RC20. Mainly, I just wanted a bit of noise from the noise follow module and also a bit of distortion to kind of saturate the sound a little bit. Then just some EQ to roll off some of the lows. Some sidechain compression for our kick as well. And then what I did was route this to the same return track that we send our vocal to. I actually really like to send some elements to the same return track. It kind of helps to glue sounds in the mix a little bit, like kind of make it sound like it's occupying the same sort of space. Everything we be Really, really nice. And one other little bonus tip I give you as well, if you like a sample, but it's not sustained enough, like there's no sustained note there, you can drop it into something like Paul Stretch or some kind of extreme time stretching plugin just to kind of give you a little bit more leeway to work with. But yeah, definitely try experimenting with going a kind of sample based route for leads instead of just synths. You can really get some much more interesting textures. And I really do think that this is something Fred again does a lot. But yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Definitely subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let me know down in the comments if there's any other artists you'd like me to do a deep dive on like this one. I really find your comments helpful for kind of coming up with ideas for new content. And definitely go check out the sound design course as well if you want a kind of a more structured approach to learning sound design. We really cover the absolute fundamentals there. Don't forget you can get a discount on that using the link and code in the description. Other than that, guys, Guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.